lost it. I can't see anything with this massive thing in front of my face. Um, I can give you sonar if you, that's what you want. I don't know if this is helping you. That's the, the old one. It's the old one. Um, it should, been, should have been very close. So I know, I, I thought I was just lateraling over to it, <laughs> and then I got lost in the dust. I just, watch I just tracked up that way. Um, we can. Uh, there's nothing Here. really to get snagged on, so as long as we go east again. Maybe back? Yeah, east and south. Okay. The ROV arm is holding a seismometer and the new seismometer, right? Or is that the old one? No, it's the oh. new one. Uh, sorry, what was the question? The ROV arm is holding a seismometer. Yeah, a seismometer, yeah. Seismometer. Yeah. And yes, that's the new one. That's the new one, yeah. Thank you, Krina. Eureka. So shiny. Jager. Are you guys listening to SPL as well? Or yes. Or do I have to turn on all these video copilot? No, we're listening to both. Okay, perfect. Let's If we need to, we can put this down and go find it. Um, because we don't want to go too far and pull on the cable. Yep. I think if we go straight, we'll go right, hit, uh, hit right on it. Yeah. There it is. Huh. Oh, beautiful. It's like you planned it. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Luck of the draw. Uh, so this is actually not bad for us facing north. Like turning around and facing north of, in terms two. of the cable. Okay. <laughs> Not to pry me out of this seat. I'm having fun. I know. Well, yeah. Nope. Oh, I'm on the hole.
think we got all the beads out of that hole. Yeah, or that's our dust that's settled on there again. But, okay, so if we're facing north-ish, what's that, Jed? Quiet. Yeah, there, there's some definitely some beads there. It's just that when we took off, it spilled dirt back in there, yeah. I think we might actually not be deep enough. <laughs> Can you not hear? So why is that quiet all of a sudden? Mike, just, oh, that's pretty close, is that better? But still quiet? What? I hear you just fine. I can hear you. Yeah, maybe your volume's down. Jeb, maybe you can turn up the knob towards the right. Come more, oh, that works too, maybe, for you. Okay. I don't hear you, by the way. <laughs> if you want, uh, if you want them to be louder, if you click on listen to them, in addition to SPL, you get twice the jam. I just figured that out. <laughs> and you turn up and down the volume. Turning Dan off. What's that? Oh, I said I'm just turning Dan down. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's good now. Um, Thanks for the tips. Okay. So if we're facing northish, doesn't have to be perfect. Not even close. Yeah, that we should be facing northish. Roger. Because the instrument is northish. Yeah, because we we'll do some fine tuning later, but this we, is we can spin it in the hole. But yeah, it is true. We're in a really good spot. I mean, yeah, okay, it's fine. Yeah, we could spin it. Danny can put it in there facing north. He's trigger. Trigonometry master. Yeah, just got to turn it right about 45 degrees. Roughly. Plus or minus. 48. Call it 48. 48. Yeah. Hello. Absolutely. Yep. You're oh, just slow. You're a little too far over, Danny. Look yep, at your I brow cam. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I see it in your still cam. Yeah. What happened to still cam there? There you go. Right smack in the middle of the hole. Okay, we really hope it just keeps going down and not stop right now. Not nah, my room. Don't worry too much about the north just yet because we're going to have to probably wiggle it around anyways. Is it? Yeah, a little snag on the strain relief. There, there it goes. Go. Going to tilt down a little okay, did he? Okay, sounds good. So the fit looks yeah. reasonable. Um, if we can just make, kind of do our best effort to get it uh, facing north and kind of level. It is, it's probably sitting on those thin little legs of it, so that little, so we, it will, with wiggling it would go deeper in, which is kind of also part of this wiggling process. For the last, but if we just land the ROV right on top and push it, no, not joking. That's we only we only do that for the case on stir. Oh yeah, sorry, I <laughs> forgot. <laughs> I don't know what the best way is to kind of determine how level this thing is, right? Uh, looks to be still slanted. He's, uh, you can see him pushing the ROV up a little, so it's definitely home there. Yeah. Um, but it needs some rotate action, I think. Yeah. Or if you want, we can let it go there and then come around and face the ROV north. 
Do you want to show A accurate? North? I think that's going to be really close. Yeah, I think so. Dan, that, that's probably what we will have to do eventually to get the north marker. Orange. And Shore reminds us that it's uh, it can compensate quite a bit for off level. I think it's up to 20 something degrees. But 27? 20, well, 20 something. I, I remember it as 30, okay, but I okay. want to be conservative. Because I don't think it's quite level, but it's definitely more like the 5 degrees right now. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a, a I'm gimbal. Guessing. I'm guessing. Uh, get north. Uh, I think it's time for bean bags. We can do a, a little north adjustment. When if you want to do it now, it's up to you guys. Now, care. if we're going to get off, let's go grab some bags. Yeah, good, when good we, get, we get up, it might stir it up here. Yeah, trying to stir it up as few amount of times as possible. Yeah, we'll see. But that uh, depth is perfect. That skate is uh, Look at that. Cable's in the old hole. Couldn't do that again if you tried. <laughs> <laughs> the cable what? The cable's in the old trench. Oh. How sweet is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to rotate and staple while we're here? It's up to you. Um, well, let's go, let's go grab a couple bead bags. Um, so we have to go so find our... So that's north, so I didn't quite turn it enough. Okay. Yeah, I think you had to go quite a bit, like 90 degrees or something. Um, yeah, we might not do a north with the bean bag, so, and there's a staple right there for yeah, the cable. Sure. So. I'll Go turn ahead. it and staple it. Look at the size of this fish. That is the coolest thing ever. Massive. Okay, I'm bang on north. Okay, let me know when you're stable. Jeb, do you know what the advantage of the north marker is? North seeking gyro. Because I don't really get it. Probably, That's a um, good question. I was kind of wondering that. Like, you use the ROV to put a north marker in, and then you align the thing with the ROV mark. Like, we should just be able to do it like this, right? I don't know. It might be a good question for the front row. Do you think there's any more accuracy in placing a marker to the north and then lining up behind it, or just doing it like this? Uh, in the trades, we've always done it like this. But, yeah, yeah it's above my pay grade, so... You happy with that? Sure. Well, we'll tickle, so your current tickle heading to the is right. perfectly north, right? Yes, the, pretty much. Uh, yeah, the 360 decimal zero. Yeah, the ribs of the housing are the... Uh, yeah, that looks perfect right there. Of the north-south. I don't think you're going to get better. There's no screen capture ability on bubble, is there? There is, um, but just we'd have to wait for it to clear up this a bit. Oh, okay. Which is fine. I mean, we can work on the staple too, so it's part of it. Wait for visibility. A yeah, bubble would be great. The still is also square, right? Mm. It's They're both. They both look the same. Yeah. yeah. So we have a still here, but. Um, okay, do you have what you need, Data? Excellent. You're welcome. Get where Dan, where is this staple again? Was it just? It's off? just under the magnum there. Okay. Oh, I no, I don't know if I see it, but I know there was one around. It's right there. Yep. I'll be able to grab it when I can see it again. Lynette, do you want to clear the snail trails for me? Yeah. <laughs> Quite messy. What screen you have there. Yeah, the thing that's a bummer about clearing them is that you can never... Never get them back. Well, you can't get the length. Like, they'll be very short from now on. Really? Yeah. What you talking about? They'll have no, mem more, more, no, no more memory. Can you see it, Danny? 
I don't know if I can. Do you have any more light? I thought it was right there. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm going to reach Oh, you touched it. I saw it move. There's near side to it, probably. Here, hold what you got. Let me help you out. Oh, that's cheating. I just checked in with Martin, PI on shore. He's uh, comfortable with the alignment method we're using, and I think... You're very quiet again, Jeb. Am I? Yeah. Yeah, wh why is Jeb so quiet? Do I not have him on here? You could... What do you want, like right here? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, pretty close to the case one. I think that's a good spot. Yeah. Is that table one you're on, or what? Could you try yeah, that? Yeah, test, test, test. Oh, that's way better. Table one. Yeah, you doubled up on the I channels. I just pressed back or something. I don't know what I did. I was just saying, uh, I ran the uh, the alignment method by Martin, and uh, he agrees that the lining up with the porch and that inscription on the connector is good enough. Okay. Yeah. Or good enough, like it's per appropriate way to do it. Oh, it's because I have this toque on, that's why. <laughs> Mic's too far from my ear, or the speaker. Pitch down so you don't uh, hit your manip on the instrument. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful. Uh, watch that. Oh, never mind. Can I get bubble to go down a little bit? Bubble? Beautiful. Yeah, I just watch pressing above the cable in case you slip off. Are you happy with the stapled up there or you want more? Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good, fine. Good, good, good. Yeah. There you go, staple. We got more staples. Yeah, but I yeah. think we should staple that next one down too. And then we should probably, before we bring the bead bags, get the handle over to cut this out as far as the handle goes. And uh, I can give you the handle, Bob. Let's set the handle, we'll tilt over gently, gently. And as far as we can tell, we're already below the lip of the case on with the connector top, right? It's a good depth. Yeah, oh yeah. I think so. The handle is well below. Is well, it? yeah. There's not much we can do. Well, you can try it coming the other way. Maybe the strain relief is favoring one way or the other. We, um, the one thing is every all this will be very well buried with bead bags. So... Yeah, it's not going any further that way. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe towards us. Like it's below the. It's below the green. I think. Jim's suggesting we uh, move right. the handle towards us, but then you got the connector there, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think it's. It's below the green, I think. I'm just plow some stuff in there and bury it. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you a marker for where to, where, where to find it next time. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Jeff, I don't know if we're going to be able to close it anymore. We'll just maybe yeah. guillotine the cables. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, we could try it this way, if, if you're concerned. You want to flip I'd it over? I hate to say I didn't try. Yeah, you know, maybe let's try, try to get the way. best deployment we can. I know there's yeah some delicate bits in the way, and uh, it, we might not be better off, but I think we should try. Yeah, yeah it could be that very well that it closes better this way. It would be, it'd be a shame for the handle to be the thing sticking out. The connector is the thing we can't do anything about. Yeah.
But we could pour bead bags on it. So you want to try flipping it towards us? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bobo's your friend there. better so far. How's that? That's down in the hole. Yeah, I think Is that's it? good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bead bags mm -hmm. will knock it down a little bit. And one more, maybe a staple, and then we're probably good to go get some bags. Do you want to put another uh, right so little hoop? I was just going to say, as long as we got our nice uh, photo while we're all squared up at 360, it would be nice to get a... I already got one. You did? Uh, yeah. Good top down? Okay. I can get another top down here. Sure. Are we still at 360? Yeah. Yeah, but I slid back a little. So. I know I got a good picture there. Mm. Oh, it's okay. beautiful. Okay. Thank you. That. Oh, in the uh, DSC, yeah. Yeah. We'll put another stable right here? I think so, yeah. Okay. Box out. Roger, box out. Are they in the front or the back? They're front. all right in the front. Roger. Dirk, are you able to zoom out even more by any chance? No, that's max. Oh, okay, it'd be nice to see the porch, but I think we're all... I'll be back, back. We all remember that it was lined up nicely. Yeah, I think the problem with the porch is that your autofocus is always going to be messed up. I don't know. Okay. But you can't see the porch, though. Back oh, you can, back. Put the, you can put the porch out. And maybe I can see it. It's all the way out. I'm just, yeah, thinking for posterity, one photo that shows it all, but... Oh, look, the staples are all ta taped together for your convenience. Well, there would have been a matchbox in there if it, they weren't. That's uh, okay, we'll just drop them all out and we'll move them around. Oh, there we go. Jeb, is that what you wanted? Yeah, that'd be nice. Thanks. There we go. Yeah, it looks as square as we're going to get. Perfect. Is you okay with one degree off, two degrees off? <laughs> Maybe Martin will chime in, but I think there's some convention that if it's more than N degrees, you can't call it the north channel of data, the east channel of data. I think you have to rename them. I feel like we're like... A, B, C, one, two, three. Yeah, we I might think be we're like three, four degrees off. Yeah, I think we're really close. to the uh, magnet there. Oh, I was just going to stick them in the holes in the porch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hand you one. Close. Grab the rest of them and put them back in the box. Well, I could stick them in the ground because we are going to be using them, right? Or we're going to be we're running them be down. Traveling with them, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Open box. If you can reach there, so I'll stand by. Have to move. Don't take it. Yeah, move your arm out of the way for a minute. Okay.
Mm. Ouais. Go. Open it. Oh, you want to ride on that hoop? Yeah, right on the part that goes up in the area. Get it partially stuck in the ground. I can. Nope. Not with that hole. You can drop it there and pick it up again. Drop it over the cable. Yep. That's right. Nickel. I got you a little too close tonight. That's good, that's good. Um, one thing we can do is just to get a sense of our, how proud that connector is sitting, because it looks like it might be a little bit. We have that bead bag sword, and if we can lay it across the top, close to the connector, we can see how far above the caisson it's actually sticking out. I've got a wand that's close oh. by, too. Anything that, like... Nice idea, Dirk. Like a level, right? <laughs> yeah, well... Something connecting the two sides, anyways. Yeah. I don't know if it gives us level. <laughs> well, I mean, does it actually matter if the I asked. I asked. If they're the concerned. Is? Sounds like they're concerned about it, but I'm just mm -hmm. asking whether it matters if we still cover it with bead bags. Where you have to put this thing here, anyways. So I'm just gonna. I'm just trying to rationalize why it would matter if the handle is. Cover not the handle, not. the connector. I think the handle is probably fine, but I think the connector is probably sticking yeah. out like a think? couple inches. Yeah, I think the goal is to minimize any prominence just to keep the flow down, but it, it might be minor. We'll, well see what I science says. Could very well be an assumption that they make in their yeah. research, and if it's not true, it's not a valid assumption. Well, if I don't you want, we can grab the lid and see if the lid closes. Nope, <laughs> don't want that. <laughs> Is this an idea, right? Because it's, it's a slightly, and I don't know how much. I'd say it's sticking up a couple inches there. Yeah. You could um, suck some of the beads out from underneath it.
Yeah, if we have to, we'll see what Char says. And are you off to be bag hunting or what? Yeah, we'll go get some bags. So. Okay, so everything, like our targets, like everything's been shifting south. So I made this new target. Roger. Maybe search there for first before we head farther north. Megan, you might want to see this piece. Mm -hmm. No. Where did the bee bags land it? Did you see? Oh. We did a quick survey before. Wasn't anything there. Dropped them. Oh. Come up, find the cable, and turn right. There's the cable. There's the cable. That's not on the diagram very well. We're just like, where's our diagram? We're just right here. And these say they're going off in that direction. And we landed it here. There. But it's along this cable somewhere. I guess it could have been left, or was it right? Ah, uh, we have a sonar target. You do? Okay, perfect. There it is, right dead ahead. Good That's thing bad luck. Put it on the cable. <laughs> that way we know exactly where they are. It's easy bead bags to find. We don't think it. Anything. It didn't even disturb the cable. I don't think we could have planned that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dead center. So the uh, Megan makes a good point. Sometimes we do this on purpose. It's holding the cable down. Two. That's a, no, no, that is the cable that goes, the 21 kilometer cable. Yeah. Seascape. Oh, wow, I didn't realize they had two strings. Okay. So, can we fly with all of these, or we have to do two at a time? I need uh, some cable. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Oh, blog is pilot. Watch change the video. Roger. Okay, Danny, root around with that strap and hang a bag or two in the magnum. videos on comms. They choked it, didn't they? It did. <laughs> oh no. sat there and watched them go off the deck too. What we did the one year is we basketed and just opened one so they all just sprinkled loose. But Mike's gonna want his straps back. Are these ONC straps? 
Uh, these don't look like ONC straps, but... Put your, uh, do a wrist under on that piece right there. This way here? Yeah, do a, put your wrist through the loop there. Close your jaws and put your wrist, no, no, through the loop. Uh, put it right all the way through and I'll float up and pull it out of there. There you go. Okay, hold that. I'm trying to just tighten the knot. Come down a little bit. Catch it. Catch it. <laughs> you might have to pull it out. I thought it could float up, but it didn't happen. Like a knot. Okay, let's go look at the other pile. Maybe it's not as badly twisted. That's challenging. Zoom in, Ed. Coming in. Holding there. That is a tight it's bat, a zoom, tight knot. Zoom in a little more. Can you see where it's choked there? Yep. You can grab the choked bit right behind. Oh. Want me to come out while you're moving in? Ah, I can see everything I need to see. And bubble. It's got two of their cameras on it. We like it when the jaws come into the zoomed in thing. It's a thing. So the choke bit is this guy here, right? I reckon. Yeah. Uh, no, no, grab the choked bit. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to try to pull that through. That ain't gonna happen. Okay, so they lift up. Okay, go wide, Ed. Coming out? No, uh, don't. If you start to shift with the two slip, this will look the same. Okay. Thing. Don't jerk around. Just slowly lift up. What I'm going to do is hand that to the Magnum. Are you wide there, Ed? Nope. Full, full. There we go. Okay, hold what you got. Gotcha, and then you'll have the loop, and then I can pull the rope to right, pull the rest right, of it through. Right, right, right. Okay, this is nice and easy. Slide that over to the Magnum belt.
Sonne. Sure, come. Yeah, I can. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, sometimes you get lucky. Okay, I think you're good. If you just Can pull. you get both pieces there in the uh, bubble cam? To the right. No, other side. The same side you were pulling, mate. Uh, move your arm out of the way. So you see where both pieces come out of the last hoop? Yeah. If you can get both of those. Oh, I got you. So then, I can pull the whole thing. Yeah, then I'll let go and you can pull them out. You want to get both of them as close to that white loop as you can, I yep. think. The true meaning of crane game. Okay. okay. I think you got both of them there. Release. Uh, nice and slow so I don't move the whole mess. side would be great. So we're not keeping this? No, just put it on that no, out in front of the camera where I can see it. Yeah, beautiful right there. Okay. Okay, slowly grab one at a time, maybe the closest one first. Okay. so you can hang it on the magnum jaw. Oh. I want it on the porch. Hang it on the little part of the jaw would be great. Uh, the broadband seismometers are not currently used for earthquake early warning. Yeah, the latency is too high. The delay in the data is high. They can be configured to do that. Um, I think in a limited sense, but no, they don't uh, do contribute like there. the uh, Titan accelerometers and the tilt meters do to the EW. You grab them uh, from the top of the oh. loop there. I yeah. should I should know that I'm the guy, <laughs> one of them. Uh, the BPRs are not used for earthquake early warning, as far as I know. We do have the Cascadia tsunami array that's connected here. Yeah, let's see. At this site, specifically, we don't have an earthquake early warning sensor. Not to get there then. But we do at uh, the East Cascadia Basin site. Yeah, we have an accelerometer and a tilt meter. Close? Yep. You're welcome. So you're going to hold two and I'm going to hold two? Um, I think three might be our limit there. If you grab the one in the back that's loud and proud. Elbow not working again? Yeah. No, it's been dead for a while. I found that if you do uh, shoulder down for a second, you can get elbow up to work.
I'm going to let you play with it while we're flying over there. So if you shoulder left after I come up. Been having some USBL wonkiness, but I think you're coming down here under Argus. Can you uh, shoulder left? Can't. The snail trails are gone forever now. Uh, I guess so. I did not do that. Yeah, we reset them, but she said they were going to be really short. Uh, yeah, they... Can you shoulder left, Danny? I'm trying to shoulder up and not looking. Shoulder left. Huh? Shoulder left. Shoulder left. I can do that. I think I'm shouldered up all the way, that's why I wasn't working. Yeah. Can you elbow up? I'm trying to, but elbow up is not behaving. There's a cable. Come up a couple meters. Yeah. No elbow up, eh? Pilots, we've just had, uh, we have a bunch of new viewers just joining us. Is this a good time for you to tell us a little bit about what we're doing? Or not a good time? Sure. We're uh, burying a caisson in the mud here. Or burying a seismometer in the mud. Burying a seismometer that's in a caisson in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And then burying it in glass. <laughs> glass beads, not beans, just for the record. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was just chatting with uh, Jeb, our electrical engineer specialist over here. Um, and we're talking about the importance of this instrumentation for understanding earthquakes. And at the Cascadia Basin... Can you spin around with uh, a lot now if you want to look at us? We have other instruments that are contributing spin data clockwise. to an earthquake early warning. This one, not so much. This one's helping us understand earthquakes in general. Anything you wanted to add, Jeb, or is that all good? No, that, that's uh, that's it. Cool. Yeah. These ones are highly sensitive um, instruments with a really broad range of signal uh, signals that they can pick up from lasting a few minutes to over 200 hertz. So, yeah, high resolution. And what we're trying to do is bury it in these caissons so they get a good coupling between the sensor itself and the surrounding earth. Um, if you just put it on top, a lot of times you might miss some of the signals coming from the earthquake. Or like currents um. and stuff, does the water movement? Uh, the water, mo water movement also affects it. So what we're going to try and do is bury the sensor <laughs> and then set that one on the porch, pin Danny. down the cable because even the cable vibrations could cause problems for it. Oh, wow. And the, these bags, um, we're going to open 
slice them open and pour it in, is that right? Yeah, that's kind of backfill while we've already pumped out of there this morning. I saw vacuuming up the seafloor. <laughs> well, yeah, technically we were vacuuming up okay. glass beads yep. <laughs> that we put there. Oh, <laughs> oh right, to get the, yeah, yeah. the instrument swap. Yeah, normally we uh, suck out all the mud or whatever it is in that area and then replace it with glass beads because it kind of mimics the surrounding substrate. But in this case, we're just doing the glass beads. Nice. Yeah, because putting mud back in there would be fairly unreliable in terms of, well, I'm assuming there's going to be voids everywhere. The glass beads just kind of fill every every space. Mud, you might get a couple clumps and never fill the voids. And then do we recycle the beads? Repackage them and use them again? Uh, no. no uh, I guess technically they're part of the seabed right there. Oh, I gotcha. That's just silica, so same as... A lot of beaches, sand. It just refined sand. Yeah. Yeah. Very round. It's actually like little ball bearings, and if you spill it on like a flat surface, it is incredibly slippery. Like the old Looney Tunes. Yeah, Slipping very on much. The banana like peel. Even even like if you spill it on the deck of a ship that's got a rough texture to it, and you're wearing work boots with good grip, it is. It's very slippery. I see what you're doing, there, Dan. Crash landing. Beautiful landing. Just slice that bag open and pull it in. Pretty much. I'll grab a knife. Grab a knife. Oh, there's a red one on the porch there. There's a beautiful yellow one right here, though. Well, it's a bit big there. I got the one on the porch? Yeah, one Want on the downlights? Downlights coming up. Yeah, I'll use the carpet knife. Jeb, there's another question here for you. Oh, yes, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> no, not because not I forced um, everyone to put on sunscreen no, no, the other day. Hold on, Dad. Not to you, to the who um, th that it's my mom writing. I'm the oh. little red one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> or my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about um, the little red one. On uh, my knife rack. Maybe tell us a little bit about how um, instrument our instrumentation contributes to tsunami information as well if you can please yeah um, so in this area not close to the junction box we're in but on a kind of a 20 some odd kilometer radius circle we have three bottom pressure recorders they're also high resolution instruments they can detect a few centimeters difference in ocean height you know two point six kilometers above us. Okay, we want to, uh, we want to... And they're the bottom. oriented in yeah. a uh, yeah. star configuration, and depend by measuring the time a that a signal arrives at each of the sites, you can establish a direction and a velocity of the Zoom wave. Zoom in a bit for us, Sarah. For tsunami detection, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. The Cascade Tsunami Array. It was an autonomous... Uh, constellation of instruments that we cabled a few years ago. We're clear for bead removal. So we have those real-time data You're coming clear, to shore, yeah. in addition to a few yeah. other yeah. pressure sensors across Get, the network uh, that contribute as to As low the as you can without touching the connector. Up, oh, come up, come up, come contribute up. Contribute to the tsunami detection and uh, studies. Yep. Uh, That's good. Thanks, Jeb. You're welcome. Yeah. So, um, just Danny, yeah. one thing, um, if we can do it, we can pour this from higher up so we're not so close to that connector. Uh, in the past, we just kind of like have it way above and just slice it, and it just can drape it. Even if it falls around the sides, it's fine. We've got a lot of bags. Just worried about slicing around so close. Want me to come out? Yeah, go away. I don't know if we can do wrist up, maybe. I don't think so. Oh, it's the arm that doesn't lift. Okay, I get it. Elbow up, strike a fly again. Well, if you if you can't lift, then it's fine. Yeah. I didn't realize the arm can't lift up. Okay, gotcha. Hold on, Vinny. Come out of there a little. 
Martin Hazeman yeah, from Shore. I uh, can add a bit of information here. Martin's one of the uh, principal investigators for a lot of our pressure instrumentation. He says the NOAA Tsunami Warning Center uses both our seismic data and bottom pressure recorder Cut data. The for uh, corner right there, yeah. For tsunami warning. Yeah. Yep. yep. Right there with you. Stand on your wrist. They look at the seismic data because those waves travel much faster to see if there's an earthquake somewhere that could cause a tsunami. Right. And then they use the bottom pressure recorders to measure the wave that was actually created. Awesome. To confirm. And then they refine the, the process. Thanks, Martin. Yeah. Thanks, Martin. That's good. Wow, those are really small beads. Coming yeah. out with you. It's, okay. like, it's like sand. Yeah. Yeah. Scalpel, surgeon. Can we shake the wrist, maybe? Yeah, those beads are about half a millimeter in diameter. Wow. I just looked it up. Very consistent. can uh, come oh, under and stab it a few times. That's the bottom. going on and you'll break it. That's why I put it sideways on my wrist so I wasn't putting any force against it. Um, while those are pouring, let's put the knife down on the porch and get it. Well, I didn't cut the other bag. I cut the grip. I'm going to cut the other bag. Um. Oh, shoot. Come up a bit more with it. And you're pulling out, out the case on. Yeah, we're going to cover the whole thing here. So what we've done in the past where we could do like the like a ton of like I don't know we fill the whole thing in half an hour or 20 minutes as we stuck all the bags put them on one side put the knife in the in the left arm and then held them with the with the with the um, craft and then just you drag the bag across as nice this type of stationary knife and it just falls out yeah okay I'm good for that because uh, since our left arm is stationary yeah I think so. I think it will work well with this setup. Still partial. Uh, go ahead. Set the knife on the porch there. The porch or in the holder? On the porch. Okay. Or you can pick it up again. bags so. same way we'll do the top grab there Uh oh 
was just to the right. I'm on. Grab the knife by the blade now. Well, you got it sitting there pretty. There's one whole bag in the case on. New record. your friend. I can swing to the right too if you want. Ready? Close. Okay, hold on. Let me hit lock. You happy with that? Yeah. Better be. Please fail. Good, I can lift up to uh, slice. Yeah. Can you shoulder down? I'm going to slice it there. I think once it starts gushing, you can move it over the hole. Or I can put the, but we're pretty much over the wall. Yep, okay. Nice and slow. It's a tough knife. Why did that thing just open? The light was on, and the light just shut off randomly. Okay. so we can see better. Uh, now you're over the hole. A nice slow lift. Dumping a bag of sand would be so difficult. Seems to be particularly unkind right now. Just get on in there, beads. Do we, um, for knives, we have this one and we have that kind of um, box knife on the, what's that cut knife called? Yeah, we have a carpet knife and then we have one of your big knives. Um, uh, no, we have our Green River Dive Knife. Let me have a go, Danny. Uh, those big knives do work very well, too. That's what we used before. 
if this Twist doesn't it up work. There. It's set. Ow. My ears. Yeah. Sorry. Thought I muted it. Mm. I don't think you did. I don't think so. I hit I hit the wrong button. Yeah, there's two of them there. It's a little easier on the bigger ones that we have over here. And is the idea to uh, fill up with beads till it's level? Gotcha. Till it's level, maybe even a bit of, till everything's covered. Right. Gotta love the IKEA steak knife. Or maybe you don't. <laughs> Maybe we need a sharper one. There we go, that's a good one. pretty much done I'd say it's done yeah so if we set up the the bead um, bag collector face up right now we can um, put them on the stick while as they empty so you stick it upside down in the mud and we just can put the rest these discs on them we can do it later too but it's just depending how much extra time that would take Starboard box? I think it's yes. in the starboard box. It's still full wide. I'm going to open that starboard box first. Oh, there's no starboard camera, huh? And uh, swap cameras for me. Yep, got on it. Sample. Go back to it, or you got. It's the first blue one right there, yep. Uh, yeah. <coughs> only, only seems to do it on this screen. You can put it top right if you want. No, it's doing it on that screen too. Want me to try top right? Oh, the tearing is just annoying me. I'm just going to put it up there for a second and just check. Ooh, I fixed it. Uh, nope, it's back. Whoops, you want this one? Yeah, it's not tearing top right. Looks like those are also tied together for our convenience. Uh, yeah, it's the blue, the one with the ring. That's what you want. Yeah. Some of the viewers are... So I can get both of them anyways. <laughs> okay, one's a north marker and the other one's a... Uh, yeah, they're a totally different tool. <laughs> 
Breeze fail. Well, I'm tied these together as well. I wonder why. Blame the other shift because they weren't tied together and we put them in. Going back to dive. I thought there was uh, traps in there. No, we already dumped the traps. They have to go in there at the end. Right. Okay, going back to dive. Yes, please. Now I gotta fix my. Yeah. That. Going back to bucket. Wait, they really are tied together. So that's the down side. That was oh. a cool trick. That was a good trick. Just watch the cables down there somewhere and I kind of forgot where. I think it's here. But I don't know. You think it's wire? I, you could just see a bit of it coming like this, but I don't know where it's going after that. Uh, right. So last I see it in the stills cam is right here. Well, I can see the white right where he is. I can see that white. Uh, mm -hmm. There it goes. Yeah. No, no, I see it here. This one? Okay, you can you can start to see it. It's like here as well, and then up here, yeah, yeah. So we know it's not there. I don't think it's there. Slice the bottom open with the rod. It's our north marker. Uh, not facing north. No. <laughs> Could be facing north. White on white. Oh, the cable's pretty much buried already. But you mentioned we also have to kind of secure it down? Uh, we already put a couple of staples, um, like one and a half foot staples in here oh. and here because there were two like loops in the cable that sat off the ground. Okay. We've already done that. So at the end of the dive, we'll kind of go along the cable and make sure there aren't any other ones that are just doing the same. Specifically near the instruments, the most important. Let me know if you want me to hold a wrist. Right over them. I think I moved a little bit. Okay, can I elbow up? Ooh, I got elbow. <laughs> Shoulder down. Look, looking better in the top views. Oh, okay, good. Good, now good. I'm right over it. You reckon? It's pretty close. 
to center? I'm going to find out. <laughs> oh, you got the droop on that. Stab it and I could just spin the wrist. You know, there's no lock valve on that function. Please help. I think that elbow's drooping. It is. Need a butterfly knife. That's actually working pretty well. But the elbow that's drooping or the shoulder? That's the elbow droop. Not a very impressive hole, is it? No, I think that knife is it not not as sharp as it could be or something. Looks like the point broke off. No, I rounded it. Hmm. I, I say we stick the carpet knife in there for the next round. No, I'm telling you, the red knife, it's, you just have it upside down at an angle and just drag the bag across it. It's so fast. Oh, do we have a bread knife? Yeah, we have a... Oh, yeah, those are magical. Yeah, for this... As bad as they are, a lot of other things. They're yeah. perfect for this. And bread, surprisingly. That is a bread knife, or a steak knife. Oh, it is a steak knife? Yeah. Yeah, it's an Ikea right steak knife. I was just being gentle there. I didn't want to break it. I could. A dive knife, okay. No, no, I'm talking about the long, the long one. The, the one we got. Long serrated? Yeah, the long serrated one, the foot long knife. Yeah, we have a similar knife. It's the other knife that's on Excalibur, there. Excalibur, isn't that what we named it a couple of years ago? <laughs> Pick that, uh, whatever's like that. drooping there. Pick it up.
If it's going to droop like that, let's stow it, Danny. Shoulder up and elbow down. I'm worried it's going to get stuck down and won't be able to get it back up. Did you say we have one of those ONC knives, or is it we don't have any of those ones on, on the RV, Dan? Uh, we have a Green River dive knife that's, that's you know. Similar? Yeah. Okay. It's another knife. I can vent the bag a lot more with this knife. I just yeah, okay. have not done so yet. Still over the box. Yeah, that's about it for that bag, eh? Yeah. Okay, we got one more on the porch. Did any of you guys just hear the static that Pete was reporting? Like a kind of sound? I did not. I didn't hear it. What I'm definitely hearing is cell phone interference. Like there's a phone right on the headset cable or something. Really? Could be me. Yeah. Is it my phone? This one? I don't know. It does it occasionally when it does an update. There's interference from the unshielded phone and the audio cable. Huh. I'm not hearing it. My, we'll see. my phone was close to um, my audio cable, so maybe it was oh, okay. me. I've maybe. moved it. We'll see. All right. It why is it that the old phones used to always have that do, 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 every time on a radio or something when, you, or when you're about to get a text? Well, I think they were, it. right, they were getting the data in and it was interfering. I think the frequencies were so close. Can you turn yourself down about nine decibels? Uh? Me? Yeah. Sure. You got it. How do you guys turn yourself up and down? It all has the power. So I think it was, oh, hold on, halfway there. Uh, I think it was just the um, level of, uh, like the interference coming from the radio. That's what it was. I know exactly what you mean, because you would know you were getting it before it showed up. Yeah, now I don't hear Ed at all. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I can't hear a word you're saying, Ed. So. Okay, maybe, more f maybe 4 dB. <laughs> He's just tuning you out. That's what he was doing. He always says nine, so I just pick nine. Um, hi, Greg. On shore, my f web browser is currently frozen. I try to revive it, but could you continue logging for me while I'm troubleshooting? Thank you. great yeah the nice thing if it's on the end like that you can always just kind of lift the back end of the bag too and it just pours up manipulator in a spastic position
So we've just had a about 10 viewers join us in the last few minutes. So just for an update, we're doing um, instrumentation swaps, installations, some scientific surveys on Ocean Network Canada's cabled observatory network. We're in the Northeast Pacific Ocean. We're at a depth of 2,661 meters. We're currently at um, the Cascadia Basin, which is one of the nodes where we have a whole suite of instruments. You can go to oceannetworks.ca to, to check out more information or nautiluslive.org and this is currently Expedition NA-151. And to find out more information about Cascadia Basin, there's a, a great blog post on the Nautilus website there for you. And we are putting beads That's gone. in a seismometer, or to, to encase a seismometer, which is giving us information and data about earthquakes. An important thing because we're at a, the Cascadia, close to the Cascadia subduct, subduction zone. And how far are we off the coast of Vancouver Island here? Approximately. The table one nav. Uh, yeah, we can <laughs> wake Renny up and ask him. <laughs> Question relayed off. through SCF is how far are we from shore? <laughs> <laughs> one moment. Thank you. Lauren, you said from British Columbia? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever remember the answer to that question. Well, I know when we're at Dever, we're approximately 300 kilometers. Okay. Closest land, oh, that's meters. We get to nautical miles. 110 nautical miles, or Uh, 205 kilometers. Right on. Fish. Thanks, Rennie. Thanks, Rennie. Yep. If you want specs on the ROV Hercules, please check out nautiluslive.org. Um, take a look at the science and tech and you get all sorts of good information about the ship, about the ROVs, all that kind of good stuff. And time zone wise, we are 8.48 p.m. Pacific time. Neat fact is we do all of our dives in UTC. So that means it's uh, universal across the world. Makes it easy for science to uh, report everything in UTC. Minimizes any human error with uh, data readouts. Right. Times. I've had my bag jollies. Good, we can go get some more. So we'll just put them on the porch.
We still have one on the porch, I think. Only hearing half of what you're saying. Yeah. I I still can't hear you. <laughs> there we go. I'm like half deaf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you can grab them up. Okay. <laughs> it's like, just tell me what's up to do, and I'm like, can't hear anything. I thought you would hear me ambiently. But Not when I've got other things going on in my view. Well, that's what's happening. I can get both of them there. Nope, grab both with a minute. Do we still have one on the porch or what? Thought we brought three over. Okay. You hook this one and I'll hook the other one. I have to hook one and then the other. Just grab the, in the middle of both of them. That works. Ready to rotate, Jake? Uh, you can relieve Danny for a while, or you can sit here and I'll relieve Danny. Which one you want? Do you want to take a break? Yeah, he's been in there for a while. He needs a break. You gotta, like, pry me out of this chair. Well, we all got to rotate through, man.
Jake, you can drop one and knife the other one. All right. Just when you slide the knife into the bag, just be careful coming up. Okay. Just come straight up and slow, otherwise you'll snap that thing. Good bubbles your friend there. Dirk stepped out for a little break. I'm just looking ahead here in the dive plan, and looks like we're going to be recovering a hydrophone array. I think you surveyed that earlier. Is there, um, will we be able to put the hook down while we're still working at the broadband seismometer, or are those two sites going to be too far apart? Let me uh, take a look. Thanks, Randy. You can stab it in the middle. Stab it in the middle? Yeah, it doesn't have to be at the corner. I don't see that we surveyed the hydrophone array. Did we go over the hydrophone, Dan? No? Okay, maybe I'm mistaken there. I thought I saw the little tower. It might have been the CTD monument. Um, yeah, from where we are here, where it would be lowered on the starboard side of the ship, we're over here on the... What am I doing wrong here? Swing the bag right into the knife. Okay. Port and west side currently. Uh, but from the front end, not the side. From the f you from want the, pointy the end. blade to go, pointy end to go in, like you're stabbing it in the belly. The sharp end. Here, let me show you one. Aren't I looking at the sharp end right there? Yeah, yeah but from there you want to go in perpendicular ah. like that. So no, yeah, come closer bubble. to the. Yeah. There you go. Now just. Gently go that way until the knife disappears and the bag's laying up against the magnum. There yeah, you go. Now you're in. Now you can gently come up. Yeah, lean into it again. Yeah, keep doing that until you're all the way through. Tear right out the bottom as you keep coming up. Lean it over the magnum a little while. I think you're pulling it away. Yeah, that's good. Let her go. I was looking at it. I thought it was pointed out. No, no, <laughs> I was sorry. bringing it back towards it. That's a, I was just. We're not deploying the magnum because the <coughs> elbow's acting funky. Okay. We kept dropping. I'm worried it's. I should have looked there. there. It's it's going that way. I don't know. I didn't. <clears throat> It's all right to leave a little bit in the bag, because if you don't, the bags tend to float away. Okay. But you can shake, 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 and then get the rest out of the cut.
Yeah, if they're totally empty, they kite off into the breeze and we kind of go chase them down. So is that empty enough there? No, you can give it some shaky. If you bounce it, the rest will come out of there. Still pouring out of there. Diminishing returns. You set the corner down on the corner of the case on it. Set it down and pick it back up, it'll pour in. Oh, free sale. <laughs> So I know for the yeah, folks in the van. I'll give her a few more shakes and we'll call it good on that one. So for the folks in the van, you've heard this before, but we do have a whole bunch of visitors who just joined us in the last five minutes. So I wanted to repeat a little bit of info. Um, Let's say that one's done. Yep. Where are we throwing the empties? Stick them over the white spike. Oh, okay. We are currently just throwing in a bunch of glass beads over top of a seismometer. This is one of the instruments in the Ocean Network Canada's cabled observatory network. We're at Cascadia Basin. Uh, 100 and, no, what did we decide? 206 kilometers offshore, 100 and something nautical miles. Yep, 110 nautical miles. 110 yeah. nautical miles. Thank you, Renny. Drop it there. Yep. And... Maybe. <laughs> You can check out more about the expedition on Grab the chicken uh, by the throat press it down. Or oceannetworks.ca. Grab it by the uh, duct tape, Dick, and then push oh, okay. it down on there. You'll get that ring will get stuck on the jaws. And this instrument in particular, this seismometer, it's really important that it measure the movement of the seafloor which is why it's embedded in the seafloor in a caisson. And we're filling it in with the glass beads so it doesn't pick up any movement of anything other than the seafloor, hopefully. And our pilots are working on filling up the space around the instrument with these glass beads. This instrument is helping us understand earthquakes better. Connected to our node, which is a physical cable, big, like a big giant plug on the seafloor. We have a number of instruments. And in one of the other areas around this node in particular, we have instrumentation that's contributing to an earthquake early warning system. We also have an array of instruments giving us information about tsunamis, bottom pressure recorders. And Jeb, you said that uh, that's in a stab in first for star-like configuration. Is that what you said? 
Yeah, the cables all come back to a central point and there's three of the instruments. Uh, each cable length is about 20 or 25 kilometers long. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Okay, I yeah. didn't realize it was that big. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And of course, that uh, instruments, when, we're, when they're in array, an array, we get this nice um, data signature where you can see which instrument picks it up first and that gives us a sense of directionality of where um, the event is happening. And in this case, with the, with the tsunami bottom pressure recorders, uh, changes in the, the pressure um, above the instrument reading. So that displacement of water that, that we get yeah. with the tsunami. Yeah. yeah. At, at shore is the water into that's it a little shallower. More up. That's where the large wave happens, but out at sea it can be very small. And we need these really high resolution, as I'm fond of saying, instruments <laughs> to pick that small variation up. One of the coolest things I think we have on our website is um, the earthquake data dashboard. Will this will this seismometer feed data I'll into that up. data dashboard? Yeah, it does. It, it's not part of the earthquake early warning system, but yeah, it does go into that dashboard and uh, you can see little snippets of these earthquakes and the relative time as it reaches each of these stations across our network. Yeah, so if you go to oceannetworks.ca and you click on the little hamburger yeah, in the rip. top right and you go to data dashboards, you can find your way to the earthquake data dashboard. We see, uh, uh, you can see data for earthquakes around the world. Yeah, that's yeah, quite neat. The graphic is really intuitive. It shows a little circle where the center of the earthquake is estimated to be and then the radius of the circle is proportional to the magnitude. Um, you know, it was interesting until I started playing around with this myself, I didn't realize how often we have earthquakes mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. um, so on our data dashboard, uh, anything over 4.0 will, will show up. Um, and then only within, only data within the last year will show up on the dashboard. That data isn't lost. You can go to the uh, Ocean 3.0 data portal. But, um, yeah. So there was an earthquake yesterday of a magnitude of 6.6. .6. That's, well, that's substantial. Let's uh, move it around a little. It's pouring out over the edge there. Yeah, and the nice map kind of concentration of earthquakes really highlights the ring of fire and the other seismically active areas. Yeah. Maybe you filled the backside some. So can the seismometers around here detect Hercules? If we turn them on, yeah. So you have them all shut off around here? or? Did yeah. It, we can run them as long as we've got the sensing masses locked down. Um, but yeah, if we unlock those, definitely the vibration would pick up. When I test these back at our Marine Technology Center, I can be a few bays away, and I tap the wall, and I see the small signal show up, you know, I don't know, 50 meters propagating through the concrete floor of the facility. We've seen periodic uh, signals show up in the data, and it turns out to be an air conditioning unit from another company at the end of the building turning on. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. You were working at MTC late one night, as you frequently do. <laughs> I've heard this, Jeff. I drove in, and you knew I was there because you saw it on the seismometer right. that you were working on. I saw Ed's signature, <laughs> that pickup truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm sitting at my desk upstairs and over a few units, I can stomp my feet on the floor and watch the data on my screen just oh, to make cool. sure it's still yeah. alive. Yeah. Maybe towards the back, Jake. I think it's running out the front there. So what makes the instrument so sensitive? Well, part of it is the high-gain electronics. Um, it uses a force feedback mechanism where it tries to hold a mass in place. And when an external vibration comes in and moves that mass, a current is sent through a coil attempting to hold it steady. And the current that's required to do that is proportional to the amount of vibration. 
and then that's amplified a great deal. Maybe some shaky to get the uh, another cut. The seismic signal out. Can't see it that's really out. cool. So yeah. it's so it's a an electrical physical connection there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how these ones work. That's right. So the other day, uh, yesterday, the days are all blurring out here at sea, I have to say. Mm -hmm. But when we were um, putting in the other seismometer yeah. at the Endeavour hydrothermal vent field, mm -hmm. there was the, um, the instrument in the, the long tube. How yeah. does that work? Yeah, that one isn't as, that one can be handled more comfortably without having to lock any masses. I don't know if that's due to the absence of ma masses. I'm not as familiar with the mechanism in that instrument. But uh, like this one, anytime we transport it, you have to clamp everything down inside. You send a signal through the browser interface, like the web page, and tell it to lock it up. The other one's a bit more uh, robust, I guess you could say. Okay. And I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure the mechanism that's used mm. in that one. Very cool. So is it in like a helium or like a nitrogen filled chamber in a, or a vacuum? It is, yeah, inside the housing. The instrument is then within another sealed vessel inside. And some other uh, uh, some organizations that it's shake open it? in the back pretty good. Yeah. That deploy these instruments, like our friends in Washington at OOI. Uh, so I think Mbari down in California. They'll evacuate the housing and replace it with nitrogen or hydrogen. Yeah. something that is less conducive to conducting heat because oh. even some of these instruments are sensitive enough to detect the thermal heating of oh, the electronics mistake. convecting inside the housing. Pick it up by the uh, corner closest to us. Yeah, I'm unsure if we have a seismometer at ACO or not, but yeah. I know we have a whole bunch of instruments down there. But I do not remember doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a case of like all those little things we mentioned about, yeah. The coupling with the, the beads, the uh, high gain electronics, the hermetically sealed chamber inside is just trying to squeeze every inch of, I guess, every G, no, every meter per second. Just uh, trying to make it as solid to the ground as possible. Yeah. This instrument, in addition to the velocity sensor, which are the masses, has an accelerometer, so which is more of a strong motion sensor. Its done? full scale yeah. range is 4G, right. four times acceleration. Uh, due to gravity, and it can take a bit of shaking. That's not one we have to be as delicate with. And then the whole assembly inside is on a leveling mechanism with uh, gears that can compensate for up to 30 degrees of out of mm -hmm. level. If we got things moving 30 degrees at a level, we have problems. <laughs> Well, oh, they we do. On Cascadia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they do. Uh, they do settle in a little bit after we deploy them. <laughs> the one at Mothra that we put in slowly drifted, and all of the masses oh. I described kind of sagged to one side, oh. and then we had to nope. recenter the mechanism, and then they came back, and then we had to do it again. Interesting. Yeah. How much power do these uh, require? Do a bit of punch there on that. It's uh, not there. outrageous. Yep. Of course, when the motors are running, it's a bit more. But I think under normal operation, it's 200 milliamps at 48 volts. So uh, whatever that is, 20% of 48. Yeah. We just it, happen to have those numbers, you know. Well, I, when we were troubleshooting the other one we just deployed, I wanted to make sure I knew okay. what current it was okay. supposed to go. But uh, yeah, there's a Linux the Linux computer running in these, too. That's the digitizer, yeah. or excuse me, the uh, the user interface, the data. Probably something a little more robust than a Raspberry Pi. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't guessed it, folks, Jeb is an electrical engineer, yeah. <laughs> and your your fan club is listening, Jeb. Sure. I'm not a specialist necessarily with these instruments or the physics of it, but yeah. Flying over to get some more beads. That's what it looks like. What is this, third, third trip? Yeah, now we get to play with the choked one that we re-choked. Go. 
grab that knife out of the uh, magnum, would you? Grab it by the little pigtail there. Right a little. You may, yeah. Oh, oh. got a bolt. Got it. Opening. Freeze fail. Freeze fail. Ed, isn't that a Jay Giles song? <laughs> I believe that's called Freeze Frame. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need to add. We need a little bit of music in the van. Okay, yeah, that would be nice. And there I have it. <laughs>